Right, my name is Jun Liang here, and then I'll be your um, host for today. So I'm also a trainer here in Amazon Global Selling under the Amazon Seller Education team. All right, so today I will start on this topic. And by the way, for those of you who are new to this session, to the live webinar, do remember to scan the QR code. The QR code is on my uh, background image as well. Right, so this is a single page of free educational resources that I uh, put in together for sellers. So in the page, there will be a lot of resources that you can refer to. I will be updating it very frequently as and when there that I think there are very useful information for all of you. All right, going forward, some important notice. Take a quick read on this for a few seconds. Okay, so if you're new here, just for your info, you can find all our recording in our official YouTube playlist. And the Q&A segment, however, will only be available for you, the live attendees, just to be fair to all of you who share your time with me today. Now, the recording will only be the content itself, or you can rewatch all the recording uh, if you want to refer back etc. So if you have any question, let me know in the question box. And for those of you who already share your question during the registration, I have already extracted it in the morning. Uh, so if you just register it maybe a few hours ago, I may have missed out those questions. So in that case, uh, I will need you to put in the question box or, you know, any time of the session, if you see anything that you have a, you have a question for, just put it in. I will be able to uh, look at it during the end and then I will address it before we end the webinar. So last but not least, always make sure that you are uh, referring to the most updated information because um, sometimes things like pricing, policy, regulations, um, that kind of stuff may be updated quickly than I can cover in the webinar. So uh, as far as I'm aware, today, whatever I'm sharing is updated as of today. But if you are watching this recording a couple of months down the road, etc., do always check back to the latest recording or you can look into the Seller Central Help or even the Seller University information. So this is a team I'm in. I think a lot of people doesn't know that um, there's a team called Seller Education here. And then we provide free education and training through a variety of the programs. Right, Some of it will be the Seller University content that you see in the website as well as your Seller Central account. The other one will be the one that you are attending right now, which is the live webinar. And then the good thing about this live webinar is that you get to ask your question live. And then from time to time, I do also invite a special guest uh, externally. It could be like service provider or it could be some uh, other um, Amazon folks who can share with you their insights during the webinar. Okay, so this is an agenda today. All right, so just some recap. All right, so today is actually the prime big two days all right, in the US as well as in uh, Singapore. Just for info, right? And of course, um, you know, optimizing your listing is something that you should not start doing only when you are about to, um, about to to participate in the big events. You know, it's something that you should con start to consider even before that. All right. So actually, the next up and coming uh, big event is probably the Black Friday Cyber Monday. All right. So for Black Friday Cyber Monday, the date is not a secret. You know, you could probably search for it. It's a it's a known date. For Black Friday, Cyber Monday, All right? So you know, from now to that period, right? There are still things that you could work on before the big event. All right? Just a quick recap. This is something we covered in the previous section. Um, there is eight essential elements, or you can call it attributes, right? These are the things that you actually have a control in, right? You can make changes, you can optimize, you can um, do testing you know, on, on all these um, eight elements that you see here, right? So to, in a way, make your listing more visible, more relevant to your target audience. All right, something I covered in the earlier sec uh, session as well on this regarding um, this, what we call a listing completeness score. This is more of your own evaluation of your own listing. Right, you can give yourself a grading for your listing, 
right? This is not something that it's um, that will, uh, should I put it? This is not something that is being calculated back end, but more of your for your own, um, for your own evaluation, right? So. Uh, the um, recommendation is you try to get the grade uh, A, right? So you can see this grading is based on uh, which are the attributes that you use, right? Out of those eight that I mentioned, and of course the disclaimer is that you know having used all of it, getting a so-called grade A, you know, may not actually means is good enough because a lot of times the copywriting itself, the wordings, um, the the images itself could also have a huge impact on your listing. So it's not just about um, using the, the elements or the attributes on your listing, but you know, as a whole, not just that, you need to take into consideration the copywriting, the wording, the text, the description as the messaging you want to convey. And um, again, this is just the scoring table as a uh, suggestions, all right? And the next one is more to share that you can see how uh, you can view your own listing, all right? So typically, um, some of these, I would say, uh, indicators that could have an impact of your listing. So this may cause your listing to be suppressed and that is not something you want to encounter while you are selling on Amazon, right? Because a suppressed listing will mean that your listing may not get any visibility Right, it's not going to show up in any searches because there are some core elements that is not present. Okay, part two. So like I mentioned earlier on the suppression uh, meaning, so you can see that uh, sometimes if you realize, uh, if you have a lot of listing, you know, that may be something you want to check in daily to see if there's any listing being uh, flagged out as suppressed, right? So you will want to fix this as soon as possible. Right, some possible reason for suppress, right? So um, as much as possible, if you realize the listing process is getting um, more and more streamlined so that there will be more compulsory fields that is being requested from you so that you will have lesser a possibility of having your listing being suppressed, right? So these are just some, I would say, common reasons that getting that will result in your listing being suppressed. Right, things uh, you can see here. All right, I won't go into too much um, details on this because if you are creating a brand new listing, most of the time this will be the compulsory fields already. Right, so um, some cases of this will be, uh, for example, once you create a listing already and then uh, you might uh, have a chance to maybe change the product category. All right, and then during that process, uh, the new product category may have some compulsory few which you did not fill it up at a point of time. Um, so sometimes that cases may cause some of your listing to be suppressed. Right, same for images. All right, so images is something that you may not see immediately during the listing unless you actually uploaded an image that is totally different. So for a uh, new seller, just for info, you know, if you were to create a listing, for example, in your listing, you are saying that you are selling a bottle. And then if you try to um, upload upload a picture that is, a, for example, a t-shirt, right? During that time, you will most likely be flagged already because the listing information and the image is incorrect, right? So, but there are cases, you know, uh, even um, if you put up a listing already correct, and then you somehow went back to edit your listing or if you change the title uh, that resulted in a mismatch, right? So those are the possible chance that your listing uh, may be suppressed because your image is not compliant with what is required. And of course, there are some other technicalities like, you know, your pixels, your your images, um, dimension, etc. That is something you want to be aware of as well. Right, but I think uh, that is less of a concern um, you know recently given that there's a lot of tools around that can help you create a uh, high definition kind of uh, images for your listing right so i'm going to briefly cover through these tools i probably share it 
again already, which I think this is a very uh, useful tool that I think all of you should do it for the newer uh, attendees that did not attend the previous session, I will share with you. Right, if you go under your seller central, under the manage all inventory, right, you should be able to see something like this, uh, improve the listing quality, all right? So you can do it in bulk as well if you have a lot of listing that you have in your seller central so that you can fix it um, easily in bulk. Right, if not, you can select the individual one to improve your listing quality. Right. So something like that, if you click on that, you will see uh, something like this. There's an option for you to click on your particular product listing. Right. If you click on the improve listing quality, there will be a, another site a window at the site. Right. It may look different depending on your product category. All right. So there will, the system will prompt you to put in some of this information which is uh, useful to have it's, it's optional but it's good to have this information so that when your target customers are actually searching for this type of related product when they do any like filtering to narrow down their searches if you have this information there it will help a lot because they will appear in the search and if you do not have you know some of these uh, recommended attributes that is filled up uh, when anyone tried to do filtering or narrow down during the search your product may be filtered away and it will actually reduce the visibility of your product right so of course if it's relevant then you put it in if it's really really not relevant then you can leave it there without any change Right, the purpose, as I mentioned, helps to you know highlight the important product information, right? As well as, for example, like I mentioned, the key advantage, um, you know, those attributes will actually appear as some of the options that your customer can filter when they are doing their online shopping, right? And also, it will also appear in cases like these for those other product attribute that you have so very quickly you know when your customer reaches the product detail page they can see quickly what are the key what are the key attributes that your product you know your unique uh, selling point of product there so without having to scroll down more if only you have those information in your listing Right, next thing I want to share is if you have a brand, all right, uh, it would be good that you enroll into Amazon brand or registry. But first of all, we go through the Amazon brand name policy. Right, so right, um, from what I covered earlier on, if you have question, do put it down in the question box. All right, so what is a brand? Now, Amazon consider a brand to be a name that represents a product or a group of products. All right, so product of the same brand or if your uniform name, logo, etc. Right, or on even on its packaging. Right, so non-branded are the product we call the generic product. So the product does not belong to any brand. And um, okay, uh, during the listing process, if you select that your product do not have a brand, your product will automatically be tagged to a generic product. Right, so um, covering this is is I would say as part of a uh, listing optimization because having a brand does helps to uh, get more I would say more confidence in your product. Okay, so um, there are some policy that uh, on the branding policy that I will share it in the next slides. Okay, uh, just give me a minute. All right, so how do you properly use a brand attribute when listing a product? All right, that's something that you can consider. All right, so of course, if you if you have your own brand, you do your own private label, then of course, your, your product will likely have a brand affix on it. All right, so you are having a branded product. All right, if not, you'll be generic. Right. This is something you can consider because by having a brand, you actually get access to a lot more uh, branding tools 
like brand analytics, etc., which can actually help further optimize your listing, right? Because if you are only having a generic, uh, generic listing, there is only so much you can optimize, which is purely just on the uh, product bullet point and product description. Right, the error code you don't need to um, remember, like you know what happens because there's a whole list of the error code that you can search for, right? And then um, the error may sometimes be a little bit long, which is why it's represented by the error code instead. All right, so the I would say the solution is that if you believe that you have the right information and if it's still showing as an error, you can consult the selling partner support. Right to assess what is the issue and give you advice on the next step. Okay, so let's say you have a brand, or you're a brand owner, you want to put in your list something that you have a brand. All right, so if you are reporting, or let's say like certain of your listing, you try to put a brand which you are a brand owner or you are authorized to use the brand but you are unable to do so, please try to provide all the necessary information right when you are contacting the seller support so that they can better advise you and check on it on their end. Right, so some example, right, that you can't use as a submission or to show your vendor product is things like, uh, you know, pasting something over stickers. I mean, over wrapping, you're pasting a sticker over wrapping like all this shown. All right, or if you are selling something that you do not have the authorization to sell, or you are selling something is very similar to uh, existing product, which it could be flagged as an infringement. Right, so don't don't try to do these. Let's say if you are trying to list uh, something that is a brand that you have no authorization to sell in. All right, just, just a quick guide regarding the uh, brand. If you're intending to enroll into Amazon Brand Registry using your trademark brand. Okay, now I think this part three will be likely the most, uh, I would say, um, something that you can action on after the session. All right. All right, so the listing title is very important. All right, you can see when you do your searches, you know how all these... Uh, listing title appear right so the way it's showing up does make a difference when people are browsing when a customer is browsing through the search result all right so this is a basic requirement for the title all right do not use all caps okay i will just share some of the common one i think do not use uh, symbols Right, like exclamation mark, dollar sign, etc. Right, typically if you try to use this, it will be uh, you won't be able to save at the start already. Right, and then things like hot item, bestseller, high quality, these are the terms that is very subjective and it's uh, not compliant with the title requirement. So as a simple guide, you know, as a rule of thumb, you can focus on these three key area, right, on your listing title, right, use one to three key words that, you know, identify your product, right, and then the unique selling point of it, and then you try to read it yourself and make it easy to, to understand when you read it, is that something that you as a consumer, as a customer can understand it well as well. Okay, these are some examples as well. You can um, see how you can structure your product title. Okay. And um, yeah, I will leave it up to you to read a while because I think, at least for now, you know there is a lot of the um, tools out there that can easily help you to generate this. Um, so I would say that 
at least in in Amazon perspective, when you create a new listing now, there is a generative AI tools that will help you generate at least the first draft of the listing title, listing description, etc. So do make use of that. All right, and then even if uh, let's say if you want to improve your existing listing, you can also use the other tools, free tools out there like you know ChatGPT, Copilot, etc., to um, put in the information and get them to give the prompt to generate with you to generate for you uh, a good you know Amazon um, product listing title, etc. All right, and uh, of course don't use the uh, don't use the first draft. Always try to adapt it to to the call keywords that is relevant to your listing. All right, so I have some example like this, all right? But I think you, you get a gist of how uh, this is going to be used, right? So that can be something you consider when you're using other uh, free tools out there to help you generate those titles. All right, so these are like uh, not a very good example. Right, first one is like too short. The second one below is too long. Um, I think you can't put it that long anymore. There are some character limit, but uh, just for info, yeah, you can. The, it should be about hundred and hundred twenty five character limit. Now, if I'm not wrong, right? So yeah, but uh, the, some cases maybe like old listing etc. Who are still being able to put a very long title, um, which is not very ideal. Um, anyway, it's not going to show up in the uh, listing result as well. Okay, this is also a, a better example, all right, how you format your product title. Right, if you have a brand name, you can put it first, right? And then, um, of course, your the core keywords that you think is a good uh, representation of your products, all right, and the key characteristic that you want your target audience to know of. Right, summarization of what I share, um, the things that you can do, and also things that you should do, and what other things that you do not do. Right, this is basically what I shared earlier on, uh, the key summary. Right, so do remember that um, do not use uh, Chinese characters because um, I do have questions from seller before who is actually selling like uh, for example bilingual books etc all right so um, yeah so it's not uh, possible to put in the Chinese characters in the product title all right you can of course use it in your product images etc yeah but in general um, yeah amazon.com you're selling to amazon.com is uh, everything is in English Okay, so the next thing I want to cover is the search keyword, all right? So I'm sure you all know that uh, typically when you shop, you will go to like, for example, like Amazon.com, you start searching for the products that you think you want to buy, right? So this is uh, one of the very important entry points to your product itself. So how to identify the keyword to use is very important, which is what I'm going to share. That is actually a few uh, methods that you can use. All right, first one, okay, you can zoom in on the selling point that shopper care about, All right? So um, things you can easily get will be like the comments for reviews from the product opportunity explorer, right? Or it could be in general, depending on what you sell, you can look at your competitors' uh, review as well to find those keywords, all right? And then um, in the seller central report, you can also extract those information as well, which I'm going to share with you as well. Yep. So first one, um, search engine. You can use search engine to find the keywords, right? Things like Google Trend or the Google Keyword Planner. So to help you find the keyword ranking, if you really want to, you know, uh, find more keywords that is relevant to your products. 
the next option is can refer to the local retail website let's say if you're selling something uh, that is also available in the um, offline like a, or other online website you can actually try to explore that use the uh, searches to see what are the most common keywords that pops up The well, next method you can find is like uh, find those review blogs or even videos. Uh, what kind of the things that people are talking about? What kind of uh, messaging people are sharing about in those uh, videos, blog, vlogs, etc. Okay, so internally in Amazon, if you have Seller Central, there are tools you can use as well. The Product Opportunity Explorer, I'm going to zoom in a bit for you. Okay, you can see, let's say, for example, in Product Opportunity Explorer, you will um, finding some water bottle that you're selling. Uh, you can see these are the search terms, right, very easily on what are the different search terms. Uh, you can use this as a starting point to optimize your listing for the search as well. Okay, the next one is the brand analytics tool. All right, so this is only available if you are a brand owner. So you are enrolled into Amazon brand registry with your own trademark. It is something you can do so you can see. The search analytics give you things like the top search terms. All right, then there are other information like, you know, based on those search terms, what are the top click brands, top click category, you know, which AC, etc. All right. And the click share, commercial uh, conversion share, right? The product title, right? And also the other one, which is the search query performance. You can also use that to find more search terms or search uh, keywords that you can use for your products. All right? So you don't have to start from scratch. You can easily find all these top few uh, searches keywords that you can use it. Right, the last one is the uh, Amazon Ads search terms and search term report. I think I mentioned uh, in a couple of slides above. So this is something you can use. All right, you can um, generate the search term reports or you can view it on the user interface itself. You can see once you created any uh, Amazon sponsored ads campaign in the Amazon ad console, you can see, right, for example, for this campaign, what are the search terms? Right, what are the uh, keywords? Right, what is the exact customer search terms? Right, and um, how many clicks are resulted from those search terms? And of course, you know, if you're running the Amazon ads, you would be able to see what is the cost per clicks. Right. Okay, so this is just, you know, some guidelines that you can see over here, All right? During your new product release, where right, you're focusing on some of the uh, general keywords, right? Making it broad and uh, a lot of numerous keywords that you can use, right? And then once your product has been around for some time where you want to optimize, which is the maturation period, Right, you will want to, and you would have sufficient data to focus on the uh, specific keywords because hopefully by then you would have sales already and then on your data, you'll be able to see uh, what are the keywords that actually drive more clicks and sales and you will narrow down you know, on those uh, information and optimize your listing further with more relevant and targeted search terms, right? And uh, of course, during the maintenance period, it's when your listing is well optimized, you will um, go in, you know, on and off, maybe optimize it on the bi-weekly basis and look for any potential high conversion search terms or whether is it due to a seasonal uh, trend, for example, like, you know, uh, Christmas or etc. Those are the period that you may want to uh, optimize and update your listing with the relevant keywords.
Okay, the next part is talking about the bullet points, right? This is one of the important feature that you should use, All right? So the bullet point should highlight the most important or the special part about your product, your unique selling point of the product, All right? And then that should be something that can match to what your shopper actually care about. Right. So those information I shared above where you can find things like uh, reviews, etc. that will be a good starting point. All right. So for different category, there are some suggestions that we will use. Uh, or rather we can recommend you like for basically outdoor category right something you want to focus on is you know the assembly of the product how tough or how uh, is it to be used in those uh, rugged uh, situations right portability etc all right and of course for apparatus a lot of time is regarding the the the, use of the resistance of the sweat, the absorbency, etc. But it's something you can use it as a guiding for a start. Okay, so this slide is to share. We also want to be mindful about the local or the target uh, country. You know, what is the uh, cultural aspect of things? Right, so for example, because maybe we are very used to selling into this Southeast Asia region, something we want to be aware of is perhaps the cultural difference in different country like a US, etc. All right. So yep, so this slide is to share that you know for a particular product, um, to mention quiet in the product listing for this massage gun may not be important in other region as compared to some other country. All right. So to be more cultural aware of the product that you are selling into. And the other more popular one is like the seasons and holidays. Okay, so maybe fall season is not a, a common site over in Southeast Asia, but over there in the US where you are selling into, that is something you want to consider. Right, different seasons, you know, may attract different kind of consumer and different uh, messaging regarding the different season may have an impact on their purchasing decision. Right, so for the five bullet points, right? So we recommend you can actually put uh, more than five, but a good recommendation, at least for myself, I also uh, follow, which is to have five bullet points. All right, so it's uh, just right. You know, not too long, not too short, right? So try to remember these. And similarly, I would suggest you, like if you don't want to do from scratch, you're not somebody who, um, likes to do a lot of copywriting, you can use those free uh, tools out there to help you generate uh, the first draft of all your bullet points. And then you can start working from there. So it will save you a lot of time. Okay, so this is something I shared with you earlier on. All right, so you should be able to see this. All right, if when you're creating a new listing, you can see that um, there's this generative AI to help sellers like yourself to write your product description. And uh, again, as a suggestion, don't use everything uh, that was generated during the first draft, all right? Make sure you read through and update the information so that it is a accurate representation of the product that you're selling and not just something that is generated um, by the AI. So you want to read through that before you do any submission of your listing. Right, this is just an example. Right, just put in a description of what your product is. Of course, putting as much as possible will help the tools to generate a more relevant and accurate description, etc. But um, you get a point, all right? All right, so I'm reaching to the end of the webinar. I'm going to share some resources from Seller University. Right, there are a couple of resources that you can get. Right? What is the listing? Uh, what are the preparation that you can do before listing, etc. This is maybe more relevant for newer seller.
Okay, so I have two other webinars for this month, right? The 15 um, will be covering about Black Friday, Cyber Monday on what you can prepare on. And of course, on the 24th, there'll be the monthly Amazon Ads webinar. We'll be uh, inviting Hui Qi from the Ads Manager, uh, Ads Manager from the Amazon Ads team to join us. So if you have very specific question about Amazon Ads, uh, do remember to join the session. Right. And that is also something that you should think about if you are participating in the up and coming uh, Black Friday, Summer Monday, you should look at start to uh, run like to certain Amazon uh, ads to help get more visibility for your product during the peak season. Okay, last but not least, just to share that our biggest event, the Southern Seller Fest, is happening in 19 to 20 November. It's a ticketed event. Right, do remember to register and sign up if you have not, and if that's something you're interested in. There are some pre summit webinar that you can watch on demand as well. So um, I think this is the third one. The fourth one should be coming up soon. Even if you miss it, you can watch the recording on demand. So do remember to sign up for the pre summit webinar series. And uh, if you are there in person, let me know, because I'll be there in person as well. 